They do call it stand-up comedy, but for me, I do think it should be called sit down. I always wanted to be a comedian because it was an escape. I could put on a different character and, and be whoever I wanted to be, whenever I wanted to be them. As someone who's disabled, for me to stand up in front of you guys for an hour on my feet, in heels usually, I'd rather go take a nap. I feel like the best way that I've been able to cope with dealing with so many crazy things that have been thrown at me is to make them funny. So I'm gonna find a chair, I'm gonna come back, and I'm gonna tell you jokes from a comfortable position. Okay, guys? I think what stopped me from being able to live my dreams was all the things that I deal with with my health journey, doctors, pain, fatigue. It's a struggle to just live a normal daily routine, let alone shoot for the stars to be famous. My name is Shayna. I have Gaucher's disease type 1. It affects every aspect of my life from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to sleep to every five minutes that I wake up tossing and turning from immense pain that I'm in throughout the night. And Maya, you're gonna crack the eggs into this bowl, okay? Okay. Shayna is, uh, she's a very amazing person. She's uh, very um, strong day to day. She's an amazing uh, mother. Shayna would put her daughters in front of anything, even in front of her health. It's a bit hard to see her in pain. It's very sad. I try to do as much as I can to try to relieve some of that pain. So patients oftentimes will become low in their red blood cell count. They don't carry enough oxygen to tissues. So you develop symptoms of fatigue, weakness, shortness of breath sometimes, heart palpitations if somebody is very, very anemic. Uh, similarly, there are other parts of the blood uh, especially a fragment, a type of cell called a platelet, which is very, very important in order for us to stop bleeding if we cut ourselves. So if the platelet count gets to be very low, uh, people can start to have even spontaneous bleeding either under their skin. Uh, nosebleeds are very common, especially in children. Uh, gum bleeding. After I graduated high school, I moved to Israel to do seminary and I almost immediately started having symptoms that I had never had prior to that. I would get nosebleeds, I was getting sick with flu-like symptoms constantly. I just had no energy. I was covered in bruises and everything just seemed to just get worse over time. This is a painting of a gaucher cell in the bone marrow. The patient who painted it for me that I've been taking care of since 1997. Because the bone marrow also gets filled up or infiltrated with these so-called gaucher cells, the bone marrow is affected in two ways. Once the bone marrow begins to be infiltrated, the bone marrow starts to expand. It puts certain pressure on the actual bone structure itself which leads to thinning out of the, the bones, something we call osteoporosis, or the less severe form is called osteopenia. I have throughout my body, in my spine, in my different bones, either osteoporosis or osteopenia. Even young individuals who have Gaucher disease who have this can be very prone to developing fractures, e even not from particularly heavy contact areas of the bone can actually have their oxygen supply cut off and the bone cells can die and patients can develop what we call a bone crisis, an episode of severe pain and actually causes people to be immobilized for a long time. So I went to the ER about a week before my 21st birthday. My spleen had become so enlarged. So they broke all my ribs, opened me up, took my spleen out, and never told me what was wrong with me. 
So as a result of the combination of the uh, glucocerebroside building up in the cells and a lot of inflammation around it, the organs can become sometimes extremely large. We feel very strongly that if splenectomy can be avoided in a Gaucher patient, that certainly needs to be encouraged. Those situations should really be extremely rare in this era now when treatment is available. Someone reached out to my father and said, it sounds like Shana has Gaucher's disease. We're gonna tell you of a doctor that we know there. I had turned 21 in October and I met Dr. Weinreb in December. I went in, I told him about my experience in the hospital and he said, we're gonna do the testing, the genetic testing on you, but I can almost guarantee that you have Gaucher's disease based on everything that you have already told me. Because it's a rare disease, many physicians, in fact, I would say most physicians have never seen a case in their professional careers. There are many other more common diseases which also have many of the same signs and symptoms of Gaucher disease. Oftentimes, physicians think of the common rather than of the rare, and that's, of course, logical. Uh, so oftentimes, they will think that patients have leukemia, some type of cancer, uh, sometimes other types of uh, blood conditions. Anybody can get it, depending on whether their parents have some type of a genetic mutation, uh, which is passed on to the child. You need two of those mutations, one which you get from your mother, one which you get from your father, and in order to have the disease. If you only have one, we call those individuals carriers. Being diagnosed with the disease didn't feel like, oh yay, now I know what's wrong. It felt like, oh yay, now I get to be sick forever. Over the last year or so, I've noticed in my older daughter, her complaining of some symptoms that feel really similar to mine. And so I'm actually looking into right now getting my children tested because all of my siblings have been tested. And one of my three brothers did find out he had the disease, but he to this day doesn't have any symptoms of it. Having type 1 Gaucher's disease means that it really just affects more of my body, where people with type 2, they'll have more brain involvement, neurological involvement, as well with type 3. When I was working full time after getting divorced, my health declined rapidly because I did not have the time to manage my disease. I ended up in the hospital many times. I almost passed away quite a few times. I had to stop receiving treatment at one point because I had lost my insurance. And even to this day, after however many years, you know, 13, 14 years of managing Gaucher's disease, it consumes my life. I have been told that I should never go without treatment again and dire things will happen. The delay in starting effective treatment can cause irreversible damages. So for example, if the part of the bone dies, that doesn't get repaired. Somebody can be left with a disability. I know a few Gaucher patients who, uh, even after orthopedic surgery, had chronic infections in the joints and actually probably ended up uh, dying earlier than uh, we would have expected that to happen. You know, I was just talking to someone and they were like, oh my God, I can't believe, you know, you're sick. You seem, you seem so happy. And it's just, I'm just so sick of like hearing people say that. It's just so frustrating. I try to alleviate her fears and anxiety by trying to talk to her, trying to comfort her, trying to be by her side. The emotional burden has been just trying to see her, you know, um, go through pain, trying to stay positive through everything. Oh my gosh, look at this one. Another pickle. There's another baby. The people who are really close to me, and I mean the people who are really close to me, Laz, my children, they see what I go through. I can't hold back the tears from them. 
but to the outside world, I have played a role and I have put on a smile and I've made people laugh and I've turned it into a joke and I don't want people to feel sorry for me. Come on, Maya, participate. Throw it to me. I just need to live my life the best that I can. I might be in pain and I might be suffering in a, in a thousand ways, but I'm here, I'm alive. I have two children who depend on me and no matter how much pain I'm in and how hard it is, they need me and I'm gonna spend my whole life fighting to be here for them. It's awesome. <laughs>